Oh, my goodness. How many people are paying attention this morning? Good morning. Thank you. Very good. Very good. All right. We have several announcements this morning, so I'll try to go through them real quick uh, so we can get the service started this morning. Uh, this coming Wednesday night, Bible study will be starting at 6 p.m. That's for, for all the folks. Uh, June the 3rd, which is next Sunday, is a homecoming. So there will be no Sunday school next Sunday morning. Service will start at 1030. All right. So everybody remember that. Next Sunday morning, service starts at 1030. Uh, June the 10th, we have the Brotherhood Breakfast that morning. And then uh, that afternoon, we have a baby shower for Nicole Stiefel. All right. Uh, wanted to let everybody know that the Baptists, the DeKalb Baptist Association ex is accepting donations for their thrift store. They have a thrift store down in Collinsville now. It's down at the old Dollar General store at Collinsville. You can either drop stuff off there, or you can drop stuff off, stuff off at the DeKalb Baptist Association office in Rainsville. So either one of those will be fine. Uh, don't forget about the shoebox items for May and June. Uh, that's in the bulletin, plus you can look on, on the back. All right, a couple other announcements. Uh, anyone who would like to sign up to keep those sweet babies in the nursery, please put your name on the sheet in the foyer. If you, have if you have dates scheduled to be out of town, please put those dates beside your name so you will not be scheduled for those dates. Uh, that's going to start on June the 17th. So everybody please remember that. All right, I have one other. It says, if you would be interested in going to eat with other couples in the church, please sign your name below. And I'll, I'll put this in, in the foyer uh, when I get done. If you need child care, please put a check mark beside your name. Some older couples in the church will provide child care. You would leave at 2 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. The place and date will be announced at a later time. Here comes the good part. If you're too young for the senior trips and too old for the youth trips, this trip is for you. All right? So anybody in between. This trip is for you. All right? Any other announcements this morning? Um, I've got to add one because I forgot to put it in there. Um, we have a vacation Bible school meeting today at 4. Okay. Vacation Bible school meeting at 4 for everyone. All right. Everybody understand that? Yes. All right. So on homecoming, that's that's absolutely correct. We will have a meal after the service that morning. So please bring a covered dish. Uh, the more the merrier. Plenty to eat. You hear the Baptist preacher up here saying amen. Okay. Anything else? All right. So I have something I want to share this morning. I was thinking about this while we was doing Sunday school this morning. We've been talking about Esther and uh, Mordecai and the work that they did. And uh, it said in our, in our, our, our Sunday school book that the, the main point was don't become complacent. Maintain vigilance. Okay? So a couple of years ago for Father's Day, my wife, my sons get me a Fitbit. If nobody knows what a Fitbit is, a Fitbit tells you you're not walking enough, your heart rate's not up enough, you're not doing all these activities. It tries to keep you on pace, keep you active during the day, get you up. You know, if, if you have a job where you sit down and work, uh, it tells you to get up every hour and do 250 steps and things like that. So while I was up there this morning in, in Sunday school and we was talking about this, I was like, man, how, how could we stay vigilant, you know, at all the time? And I thought, hey, you know what? We need a spirit bit, a spirit bit. And that spirit bit would tell you, hey, you're getting low. You need to be vigilant. You need to fill up again. You need to recharge yourself again. You need to pray. You need to get in your, in your word and study, Okay. So that's what I want to ask everybody this morning before we get the service started. Are you fully charged here this morning 
or are you running low? If you're running low, there's a good way that you can take care of that. Amen. This altar up here is a good place to take care of it. Amen. When you're singing those songs of praise, lift your voice up to him. Let him know that you're here for him this morning. Amen. If he puts a word in your heart to share with somebody, do that this morning. If he puts a song on your heart this morning, please do that, okay? Let's, let's get our spirit bits out this morning and let's get this service going today.
time because I've said no so many weeks in a row, but this Sunday I thought I'd just sing one that I, for generations we've sang to our babies as we rocked them. My mom rocked me during storms and kept me calm, and um, so I'll just sing that today. <laughs> Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me
just wanted to sing this song in remembrance of Brother Ronnie Shankles. Uh, the first day I came over here and met him, I went down and shook his hand, and he always had kind words for me. Amen. And that seat back there, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to always miss that. Amen. And, but that goes for all these people of this church. You know, when you're, when you're not here, we miss you. And, and you know, we just, uh, we love for you and all to be here all the time. And only you can know the pain You weren't afraid to face the devil You were no stranger to the rain So go rest high on that mountain Cause son, your work on earth is done And go to heaven a-shouting Love for the Father and the Son Oh, how we cried the day you left us we gathered round your grave to grieve. Wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice sing. So go rest high on that mountain. Cause son, your work on earth is done And go to heaven shouting Love for the Father and the Son So go rest high on that mountain Son, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven shouting love for the Father and the Son. Go to heaven shouting love for the Father and the Son. Can I go now? You preach now. All right. <laughs> Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter number 11, we're going to read two verses, uh, verses 2 and verses 3. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. If you would rise this morning and uh, reverence the reading of God's Word. Mark 11 verse 2, it says, And saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man, never man set. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do you this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. Let us pray. Father, this morning we come to you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, God, for your many blessings upon us. God, we thank you for that sweet and precious Holy Spirit which we can feel in this place this morning. 
And Father, we thank you for your presence and your power. And God, we just ask you to take these feeble words this morning, speak to the hearts and to the minds of your people, uh, God, and draw us into a closer relationship with you than we've ever been in before in our lives. God, this morning I lift up to you that one that's lost here and undone without you. Father, I ask you to reach down from on high to convict their heart and to save their soul. God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, the glory, and the thanksgiving for us in your holy and precious name we do pray. Amen and amen. amen. This morning, I, there, there was a phrase that caught my attention uh, in, in, in this, in this uh, passage of scripture. And it was, when in verse number three it says, uh, Say ye that the Lord hath need of him. And I, I never occurred to me, but this, this past week the Lord's been dealing with me, and so this morning for just a little bit, for just a, a few minutes, we're going to preach a message on what the Lord needs. On what the Lord needs. We don't often think about the Lord needing anything because He's all-sufficient, He's all-powerful, He's all-knowing. Uh, but this morning, I want to I want to take this and 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 uh, this passage of Scripture, and I want to preach to you uh, what I feel like the Lord has shown me in showing you what the Lord needs. It says, "Go your way into a village over against you, and as soon as you entered into it, you shall find a colt tied whereon never man sat. Loose him." And bring him, and loose him and bring him. Go to your mama. It, it says that you're going to find the colt and he's going to be tied. And this morning I'm going to compare us with a, a, with a donkey, all right? And that, that's all right with most of you. Uh, this morning I've seen a couple of looks, but it's, it's okay. Uh, we're going to compare us with, with a donkey. Uh, you know, the Lord calls us sheep in many places in Scripture. And, and y'all, that's not a compliment because sheep are the, some of the dumbest animals on the earth. Uh, but this morning, we're going we're gonna to compare up with a donkey. And the Bible says that a colt was tied, that they'd find a colt tied. The f first thing uh, uh, that we need this morning or first thing that the Lord needs uh, is, is for us to become untied. That's the first thing that the Lord needs is for us to be untied. As long as we are tied to this world, the Lord cannot use us. As long as that colt stayed tied up in another town, the Lord couldn't use him. So this morning I want to say this, that, that the Lord needs us uh, to be untied. Now, uh, and I want you to notice here with me that, that, that the colt was tied in a town where the Lord was not. And this morning I want you to understand that if we are tied up to anything, it's because we're not in the presence of God. If you're tied to an Xbox, you're not in the presence of God. If you're tied to an iPhone, you're not in the presence of God. If you're tied to a television set, you're not in the presence of God. You ask, what does the Lord need? The Lord needs His people to be, to be untied. I believe that far too long that we've been tied to too many things in this world and we've been tied even, even and, and y'all listen to me, and I'm not saying that you ought not want to work and that you ought not have a job, but a lot of folks are tied to their job instead of being tied to the Lord. A lot of folks are, are more faithful uh, to, to their workplace than what they are to the house of the Lord. And I'm going to say this this morning. Uh, you may not like it, but I'm not here to, to make you like me. I want to say this, that, that the reason that folks are faithful to their workplaces and to their jobs is because they would get fired if they, if they were as faithful uh, to their workplace as what they were to the house of the Lord. I got a couple of amens. We're tied to too many things in this world. And what the Lord needs for us to be is untied. It, it, it goes on there in verse number 2. He says, loose him, untie him, uh, take him away. But I, I want to I uh, uh, take, take that word, that word loose. Loose means to, in, in the, I, I can't say it in the Greek, but I looked up the definition in the Greek, okay? And it, say, it means to break up to destroy, and to dissolve. 
So what is, what is what's the importance in, in that in that phrasing and what he said? Let me let me take this with you. Or, or I want you to walk with me and, and let's 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 think about this. This colt is tied up. He sent two disciples to go untie the colt. Why? Because the colt could not untie his place. If we're tied to things in this world, then we cannot untie ourselves. We need somebody to come along and untie us. But the word that the Lord used there, that word loose that's translated into the uh, English as loose is a Greek word, and it means to break up, to destroy, and to dissolve. What does that, what does that signify? What, what's the importance of that? When the Lord turns us loose, he really turns us loose. He breaks the ties that bind us to this world. He will break those addictions that, that hold us back. He will break those things that, that wants to keep us from being used by him. So what the Lord really needs for us this morning is for Guest Baptist Church and the members here and the, the Christians in this house uh, to become untied. Amen. Untied from the things of the world, untied from their workplaces, untied from their families. You say, wait a minute, John, we're supposed to be a, a family people. Yes, we are. Uh, but Jesus said, if a man forsake not his father and his mother and, 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 and come after me, he's not worthy of me. If a man forsake not his uh, husband or, or, or his wife and, and, and uh, forsake not his children, then he's not worthy of me. This morning, I believe that we ought to be so tied up to Jesus that we're untied uh, to the things of this world and to the people of this world. Uh, you say, what do you mean this morning? If you read what the Scripture says, uh, if it says, if a man hate not his father and mother, uh, and then he's not worthy of me. What is that talking about? Uh, it means this, that we ought to love Jesus so much that our relationship with the people that are closest to us should look like hatred in comparison. I just lost everyone in Y'all with me? We ought to love Jesus so much that the, the way I treat my wife and my kids ought to look like hatred compared to how much I love Jesus and how much I'm sold out to Him. We need to be untied. That's what the Lord needs. That's what the Lord needs. Y'all say amen. amen. I think that today in, in the world in which we live, we've got a whole bunch of donkeys that's tied up to things of this world. Not tied up where they, where they can be used by the Lord. We'll go on. In verse, it, it says, loose him, and then in the bottom part of verse 2, it says, bring him. Bring him. In other words, lead him. The second thing God needs is for us to be untempered. You say, what do you mean, Brother John? I, I, I want to say this, a donkey's temperament. How many of you know what a donkey's temperament is? It's to be stubborn. When you pull on a donkey, he don't want to go, right? You try to lead a donkey along, he, don't, he refuses, and, and he's just stubborn, and he just will not do. I've got some kids like that, and I'm not going to name them. I'll just point at them down, they're down this way, uh, that, that, that are stubborn like donkeys. You know? and, and, and so the second thing that we need to be is untempered because the Lord said to his disciples, bring him. In other words, you untie him, you, you, and you loose him, and, and, he, and, and then you go going to lead him to me. Untempered. The donkey's temperament is usually one of stubbornness, refusing to be led. Uh, but this one could be led to the presence of the Lord. This one colt, this one donkey could be led to the presence of the Lord. How many of us this morning understands that many times that our temperament keeps the Lord from using us? Our temperament, our refusal to be led, our refusal to, to let him lead us to, in the direction that he wants us to go. Uh, uh, we want to stay where we're at. We don't want to move to where he's at. We want to uh, stay tied up to the things of this world. And he comes in and he breaks those ties that bind us. He, he uh, dissolves those and, and, and gets them, destroys those ties. And then, and then he wants to lead us. And, and this morning I want to say this, that many of us have become untied uh, in, in salvation. And then we tie ourselves back up into bondage and into slavery uh, and, and we because we refuse to be led. Our temperament is that, that we, we want to go our own way. We want to go our own direction. So what God needs 
So you loose him, you bring him. And then the next thing. And this next thing we're going to have to go backwards for, okay? It says, we're on never man say it. We're on never man say it. So I, I got to thinking about this, and I got to really studying about this, and I was thinking, you know what? I wouldn't want to get on a donkey's back where nobody else ain't never rode him. Would you? How many of you know that they'll kick and that they'll throw a fuss and they'll buck and they'll, they'll act a fool? Why was it so important that the Lord needed one that had never been rode on? He wanted him to be untaught. Because the Lord wanted to teach him. The Lord wanted to break him. You, you say break him, I, that's what you call breaking a horse, breaking a colt, breaking a donkey. He wanted to break him so he could teach him everything that he needed to know. Amen. This morning, I, I'll say this uh, is, is what we need to be is, is untaught. You say, Brother John, I thought you stay on us all the time about reading our Bibles and about uh, uh, staying in the Word, about being at church. Absolutely. But we need to be untaught in the things of this world, and we need to be taught by Him. And we don't need to be taught by man. We need to be taught by the Father uh, uh, above. We need to be taught by the Holy Spirit. That's who we need to be taught by and not anybody else. One of the biggest problems that keeps Keeps us uh, keeps the Lord from using us is that we know too much. We know how to do church. We know where, what we're, when we're supposed to stand up, when we're supposed to sit down. We know when we're supposed to pray. We know when we're supposed to say amen. We know all of the things about how to do church. And the problem is, is we, we don't have the power of God sitting down on us no more because we've replaced the power of God with some kind of program somewhere. Uh, let me tell you something this morning. What we need to do is forget what we think we know and let Him teach us for just a little while. We need to be untied, we need to be untempered, and we need to be untaught. Amen. That's what the Lord needs for us. That's what God needs for us. He, is, is he wants to untie us, and then He wants to un, uh, be us to be untempered, and He wants us to be untaught. How many of us this morning understand that you cannot teach somebody that thinks that they know everything? Amen. You can't teach somebody that thinks they know everything. I've tried. Y'all say amen. amen. I've tried. I've tried to teach folk uh, and, and some of the guys that, that, that have worked for me. It was, a, it was just absolutely amazing to me. I mean, it just, just blowed my mind. They'd come up on a job, they would be there for a week, and even though I'd been doing it since I was 15 years old, they would know more about laying brick than I did. It was amazing. They'd tell me how where we needed to set up, they'd tell me, oh, I had this one guy and I said, You're, you and me's gonna have problems. And he said, why? I said, because you know too much. And I said, "You, what you need to understand is this, is that I'm the one that writes the check, so you do what I tell you. Amen? Amen? How many of us understand this morning that you can't teach somebody that thinks that they know everything and, and, and also this, that somebody that thinks that they know everything can't learn anything? Amen? Amen. Because they'll close their ears and I'll say, oh, man, this, this is just crazy. This is just stupid. I had this one guy tell me one time that what I was doing was stupid. And he worked for me. How long do you think he lasted? <laughs> All right, now listen. I know that's funny and I know we talk, but how many times do we do the Lord that way? Oh, we think we know more than what God knows. We think that we, we understand how to do church better than God knows how to do church. We think, man, we, we, we can, we can uh, figure out what songs we're going to sing. We can figure out what, what, what we can preach and what we can't preach because we can't preach anything that might make somebody mad or we can't. No. How about this? How about we let, let God have control? Amen. 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 How about we let God take
take control and, and do it because we need to be untaught. Now, now understand this I, this morning. I am not the smartest person in this room. Y'all say amen. amen. Truth be known, I'm probably among the dumbest in this room. But I am smart enough. I am smart enough to listen to those that know more than me. And you know what? God knows more than me. Amen. God knows more than all of us. But what he needs for us to do is to be untaught. Because he wants to teach us some things. He wants us to, uh, to, to, to be what he needs us to be. This is what God needs. Is us to be untied. How many of you this morning are untied? Amen. Untied from the things of this world. You say, uh, now brother John, I, I don't know. Well let me say this. If you ain't untied, God can't use you. Okay? So are you untied? Second, he needs us to be untempered. In other words, he needs us to be able to be led. And a lot of times our temperament will not allow that. So he needs us to be untempered. And then the last thing he needs us to be is untaught. Because he wants to teach us. This morning, how many of you are untied? And if you're untied, are, are you untempered? Are you? Say, I don't know where you're going with this. This is what the Lord needs. Is us to be loosable. Leadable. And learnable. And I'm just going to be honest with you this morning. I, I know that this is probably not one of the most in-depth messages that you've ever heard. But I think that this is a needful message. This is needful for the church. Because we can find ourselves where we're, we're not loosable because we're, we're hanging on to something over here. And we're trying to hang on to Jesus too. We've got one foot in the world. We've got one foot in the church. We're not leadable because even though we're, we go to church every Sunday. And even though we're sitting there and we sing all the songs. And everybody thinks everything's okay. God's been dealing with some folks in this room uh, about doing certain things. About maybe teaching Bible school. He's been dealing with folks in this room about becoming a member of this church. And, and they just will not relent. They just will not give in. Until we get leadable, he can't use us. And as long there's folks sitting in this room that think that they're the smartest person in the room. Listen. They think you 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 think you know more than the Lord does. Because you've been in church.
this morning, I, I, I'm not fixing the end, I promise. Oftentimes, here's, here's the concept in the church. And I want you to get what I'm saying to you. We think about what we need from God. You hear what I'm saying? I say we think about what we need from God. Amen. We need salvation. We need the air that we breathe. We need water. We need Him to supply all of our needs. What we need from God. But have we ever stopped to consider what God needs from us? Amen. This morning, I, I feel like that this spoke to some hearts. Not because I preached it, but because He sent it. I believe it spoke to some hearts in this room, and I, I believe that there's some of us this morning that, that need to repent. I believe there's some in this, in this room this morning uh, that, that, that needs to get down at the feet of Jesus and learn from Him. I believe that there's others in this room that needs to get untied from some things. Maybe some sort of addiction has got you tied up and God can't use you. Whatever the case, let's think about what God needs for us, from us. Just this morning, okay? Just this, just this morning, for just the next ten minutes, I want you to think about what God needs from you. Is he getting everything he needs from you? There's folks sitting here this morning that I've never seen bow their knee in an altar. Is God getting what he needs from you? There's your message. Jason, play us a song.
There's still time and there's room at this altar. Anybody a word this, this morning? Lower that down. Anybody got anything they need to say? Somebody else? here, if it's any way possible. If you're a parent or a grandparent, 